Welcome to this course on the minister's wife. My name is Ayomi Tide Isaac Oedipo. I appreciate this privilege given to me by God, first of all, um, for me to sit here and bring to you this teaching. I also appreciate my husband, the president of M2G Academy, for this awesome privilege. I pray that this course blesses you, challenges you, deepens your relationship with your Lord and Savior, and sets your tail on fire to grow in your walk with the lover of your soul, Jesus Christ. The course title again is The Minister's Wife. Now there are several aspects of the minister's wife's life, but I'll be focusing on developing a relationship with the lover of your soul. And our key text um, in this course is from Revelations chapter 2, verses 2 to 5. I will not be reading that here at this point in time, but I do encourage that you go through it. You spend time and then read it and see what the Bible says. Now let's dive in. If I may ask, who is the lover of your soul? Is it your husband, your minister husband, a friend, a sister, a child? That question might seem dumb, but it is important that we understand certain things definitively and not assume. Have you ever asked yourself that question before? Who actually is the lover of my soul? If yes, did you get an answer? Did you wait to get an answer from yourself? If it is Jesus, then you are on the right path. Congratulations, I would say, for choosing him just as he chose you. Every human must develop a relationship with Jesus Christ, and a minister's wife is not left out. Your relationship with the lover of your soul is not automatic because you are married to a minister of the gospel. The fact that you're a minister's wife, you're a pastor's wife, or a gospel minister's wife, or an evangelist's wife, or a teacher's wife, does not automatically mean that you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, or even a growing one at that. Your relationship with Jesus Christ is not automatic also because he chose you. He could have chosen, well, he, he has chosen you, of course, but that does not mean that there is an automatic relationship between the two of you. Just like everyone presses, you, dear woman, need to press even harder because to whom much is given, much is required. Now I wanna ask, what is relationship? What does it mean? What does relationship mean? From my research, Relationship is from the Latin word relatio, if I got that correctly, relatio, which means connection, connection. You know, for those who are married or for those who are in courtship and you are crazy about this person you are with, you want to hear the, their voices every time, you want to sit on the same chair with them, no matter how tight or snug it is. Um, you know, you know how it is when you are in love with someone. That's because there is some kind of connection. There is some kind of relationship. So you, you desire them. You want to be with them at every point in time. Jesus loves you and I just this way, even better than we can imagine. His eyes pierce with love to our hearts, to us. Love so deep that we will never understand, no matter how hard we try to fathom. Now, let me ask, have you ever been jilted before? Be honest, be truthful. Has anybody ever dumped you before, and jilted you before? You thought this person loved you, was crazy about you. You also thought that you really loved this person, yet it ended up in heartbreak. Uh, has your heart ever been broken so bad before? You can, you, you, even if it has not happened to you before, you can imagine what it would be if somebody you really loved just decided that they didn't want to have anything to do with you any longer. That, then you can imagine how Jesus feels each time he longs for you and you turn your back on him. Yes, even as ministers' wives, we turn our backs on him sometimes. 
when we do everything else because of the tight schedule we keep and relegate him to the background, when we say statements like, even Jesus himself understands, at this point in time, I'm tired, um, I can't do this, or I have to do this, I have to do that, um, your relationship with him is beginning to suffer at this point in time. Jesus Christ is a perfect lover, and he desires a relationship with you and I. How do we even develop and maintain a relationship with Jesus Christ? To do this, you have to be a woman of the spirit. You cannot do it in the energy of your flesh. You cannot do it alone by yourself. You are to be a woman who walks in the spirit and not after the flesh. It can be fine for other women not to walk in the spirit, but not for you, my co laborer What does it mean to walk in the spirit? In the most basic explanation, because I really like simplicity, even in definition of things, of words, I really enjoy simplicity because that way I can remember quickly. So in the most basic explanation, it means to live each day of your life in submission to him. I'll speak briefly about this in our next lesson. However, for now, I want to highlight some of the reasons we need a solid relationship with the lover of our souls, Jesus Christ. The first one is because you are not your own. Why should we have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Why should I have a relationship with Jesus Christ? The first reason I want to give today is because you are not your own. You do not own you. As much as you think this is my life, this is my body, this is me, I can do whatever I like. You are not your own. You are owned by someone. You are bought with a price. Someone purchased you with his own blood. Now, that to me is a very expensive price to pay. I could dwell on this reason alone as the only reason that, you should, that should make you want to develop a relationship with the lover of your soul and maintain that relationship. In fact, I think this is the only reason I will give in this course. Because if you understand deeply this reason, it will be the anchor for all other reasons you can think of. Let me take you back a little bit to slave trade. <clears throat> I believe we've all heard about the formal slave trade that happened decades ago, maybe some centuries back now, or decades. I read that once a ship, <clears throat> excuse me, made it to some parts of the world where slaves were needed. The cargo of the enslaved people would be sold at an auction. In those days, slave masters paid higher for slaves depending on several reasons. And then the highest bidder got the best slaves. In our case, we can relate that to being um, slaves in the devil's camp. But Jesus bought us to himself to give us freedom by his blood. He is the highest bidder. Despite all your many flaws and scars, he still paid the price for your soul. He still paid the price for you. Isn't that wonderful? That to me is priceless. He paid for you with blood. He paid for you with his own blood. When someone gives out blood, it means they are giving out life. They are giving life out. That is what Jesus did for you and for me. So that shows you that there is an owner over your life. You do not own you. You do not own yourself. And that owner's name is Jesus Christ. He bought you not to enslave you again, but to have you to himself. This alone is more, I believe, is more than enough reason to develop and to maintain and to pursue the lover of your soul, Jesus Christ. Now you may wonder, what kind of relationship exactly does Jesus Christ want with me? What, what, what does he expect? What does he want from me? How, okay, um, I understand the relationship between a husband and a wife, a mother and the children. So what exactly is this relationship that Jesus wants from me? What relationship will please him? The simple answer is this, a relationship without rival. A relationship without an equal. 
Your life should begin, continue, and should end with Jesus Christ. Jesus is a real person. Don't value serving him and forgetting him. Now, let me say that again so that it sinks in. Don't value serving him and forgetting him. Most times what we have nowadays is we are serving him. We are busy doing this and that um, in one activity or the other, but we are forgetting him. So do not prize your activities for him to a personal relationship with him. You can serve Jesus and still forget him. He wants an intimate relationship with you. Get to the point where it becomes so real to you, as real as your skin. In our next video, I will talk about elements that hinder our relationship with the lover of our soul. This was just an introduction into what we'll be talking about. I'll see you in the next video.